Good morning. Welcome to Welsh work. Welcome to what? Where are we? <laughs> this is Sunday, yes. <laughs> Welcome to worship, welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church in Fircrest, Washington. I'm Pastor Greg, and a special welcome to our guests. Make sure to introduce yourselves to each other uh, at some point after the service. Um, this is the, uh, we are in the, what is it, the 13th, 13th Sunday after Pentecost. It's a long season we've been doing, and we are finishing up a series today on, uh, on the book of Ephesians, in chapter 6 of Ephesians, where he talks about putting on the full armor of God, suiting up for that full armor. I modeled for that, and, and uh, Cheryl drew it, so. Do we see ourselves in that? I think it, it's an interesting um, metaphor that, that uh, Paul used to, to talk about what, how it is that we are protected by God. We don't often think of ourselves as warriors, um, and... I, I had a professor once when he talked about the, the hymn, Onward Christian Soldiers, the one we're singing. For him, at least, he said, the two most important words are as and like. That, that we are um, uh, onward Christian soldiers marching as to war and like a mighty army, recognizing that there is some, there is some comparison to make here. There is an invisible strength around us that we sometimes don't feel. Amen? There is sometimes an invisible strength that we don't realize is there that we need to hold on to. One of the ways that we can hold on to it is through prayer, right? And uh, uh, Margaret specifically asked that we make sure to, to add our prayers today that this COVID virus comes to an end. Now we know that tomorrow, starting tomorrow, the mask mandate comes back on us again. Most of you are masked, um, at least for today. If you want to feel a little more comfortable, you're still, you still have that freedom to pull it down. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we back in public places, we're asked to mask up again. So we'll pray about that, and we need to pray for rain in a lot of places. Uh, there are some places that are getting it, but there is a lot of places where there is some drought. Now, the northeast right now, I probably would be happy not to have so much. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we do. We do thank you that we have access to a great power that sometimes we forget, and that is simply to be able to talk to you and to share with you our burdens, our fears, our anxieties, and to know that you are able, you are able to reach out and help. Lord, we pray that you can help us all and through us uh, bring an end to this COVID virus and all of its variants. We pray, Lord, that we come out on the other side of it with a better sense of compassion and awareness and, a, and, a, and stronger. We pray for those that lose, have lost loved ones and those who are ill. Lord, we also pray that uh, the drought around the United States and our area can come to an end. We pray for these, uh, that these fires can be uh, brought under control for the sake of people's lives, for the sake of your creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue our worship by bringing our own um, sense of our sinfulness to God and laying it before his feet. Merciful God, we offer you our lives, full as they are of shadow and light, of kindness and apathy, of hope and despair. Take what is broken and mend it. Take what is wrong and right it. Take what is destructive and disable it. Take what is useless and make it useful. Heal our sin, we pray. Amen. New every morning is God's love for us, and so we are bold to proclaim the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and persevere us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The lesson is for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. From Ephesians 6 chapter 10 through 20 verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith and with each you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of one of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always preserve in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him, Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated. Some of you know that there was, I think, a group of, was it 12 or 14 of us here yesterday uh, cleaning up the basement and putting things away and getting it ready for, uh, to, for the new flooring and the painting. Someone run across, ran across this story, um, and it's titled, Just Me and My Dad. It's not dated, so it's probably one of our Sunday school kids from years ago. Would you like to hear the story? There's, all, there's no real application to the message, but it's a beautiful story. <laughs> just me and my dad. We went camping, just me and my dad. Dad drove the car because I'm too little. I picked the campsite, but someone was already living there, so I gave it back. <laughs> we found another campsite nearby. My dad was tired, so I pitched the tent. We made a campfire. I found the wood and my dad lit the fire. I wanted to take my dad for a ride in our canoe, but I launched it too hard. <laughs> we went fishing instead. My dad took a snapshot of the fish we cooked dinner for. We cooked dinner for me and my dad. We had eggs. After dinner, I told my dad a ghost story. Boy, did he get scared. I gave my dad a big hug that made him feel better. Then we went to bed. I stayed up with my dad and let him read to me. We slept in our tent all night long, just me and my dad. Beautiful. I'll set that on the piano so you can look at it later. As Paul wrote in Ephesians 1, 2, grace and peace to you from God our Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as I said, you may not think of yourself as a warrior, and that's fine. The armor, the armor of God in our first lesson was meant as a comparison as we battle against darkness and, and depressing forces around us. And there are some, aren't there? The belt, the girdle. A soldier would use it to tuck up his robes to keep flexible and fast. Our belt in this lesson was called truth. Truth. Honesty before God and each other. We can pivot and twist and we are more flexible when we are honest and humble with each other. With God. With the world. If we don't have to hide it's easier to be more flexible and to move in this Christianity. We don't feel like we're stuck. 
We can do this because it's more important to realize that God is honest and truthful to us and shows us in all honesty how much he loved us through Jesus. So we can withstand the world. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son if for us. If God is for us, Paul wrote in Romans, if, Paul, if God is for us, who can stand against us? Our breastplate plate that, that, that protects our heart and our guts, so important to life, is called righteousness, but not our own. Righteousness, righteousness is simply knowing that we have been made right with God. If a price needed to be paid, God paid it through Jesus. Our relationship is secure. We are right with God. Jesus says so. As shoes for our feet, the message that, that prepares us to walk about in this world in this lesson is called the gospel of peace. So again, it's kind of flipped on its head, this warrior image, but we are called to proclaim a gospel of peace. Peace with God, the good news, not war, but of, of peace with God to be sure, and a desire to have and to make peace between us and creation. Our shield is called faith. And our, our experience of faith is, is trust, of course. We want to trust God. But faith, faith is, first and foremost, our relationship with God that he gave to us. He gave us this shield. We can trust his love for us. That, that is how it extinguishes the flaming darts of evil. Even if the next moment kills us, we are still undefeated because we belong to God. Faith. And, and the helmet, the helmet that crowns and protects our head is called salvation. It can't be taken from our head. And so as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we are, we are afflicted, but never crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. That's the helmet God has put on us. The only mention of a weapon is this sword. The sword, which he says is the word of God. And I think of a mighty fortress is our God. And after it talks about the strength and, and the, of, of, the, of the evil around us, it gets to the end of a line and says, but one little word subdues him. What is that word? It's a wonderful riddle in a mighty fortress. He doesn't answer it. But I would suggest that little word is grace, it's faith, or it's forgiveness, the word of God. To put it as plain as I can, we have not been defeated. We are not defeated. We shall never be defeated. And again, we have not been defeated, we are not defeated, and we shall never be defeated. We've been looking at the New Testament, this New Test Testament book of Ephesians over a month now, but actually this whole summer and for the rest of this year, I hope that it's going to make it absolutely clear that we have not been defeated. We are not defeated and shall never be defeated, not as individual Christians, not as a congregation, and certainly not as a church. Our strength comes from the Lord. Ephesians 6.10 Cheryl started out, be strong in the Lord. Actually, it originally said, be empowered, empowered by the Lord, empowered. Our strength is superhuman because our strength comes from the Lord, his power in us. 
We, but, but I know, we look at the news of the world and, and it can be exhausting. I know, the images from Afghanistan bringing back the shocking memories of falling bodies. Fires and drought all over the West. Evacuation orders yesterday in Puyallup. Earthquakes and storms dev devastating Haiti. Once again, Hurricane Henri battering the East Coast, the Delta variant, the variant and, and renewed mask mandates. Not to, not, not to mention all of the, the stuff going on in each of our lives. We know too much. We almost know too much. And that, but that's, that's the battles that we can watch, see, and describe. Underneath it all, over and above it all, is the spirit and soul of our humanity, our sense of hope and assurance and destiny. In verse 12, Paul wrote, Our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present age, against the spiritual forces of evil. All of those things that could tear us down. Beyond the Taliban, beyond arson and flame, beyond storms, even beyond COVID-19, there is a huge, seemingly autonomous force that tries, tries to destroy and tear down our trust in Christ's victory, his peace in our lives, and his claim on us. And so we're told to put it back on. Put that claim back on you. And you know what we are called to do in all this after we've put it all back on? Attack it? Run at it? Even more defiant, we are called to withstand it. Stand in it. And to help each other stand. You, 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 you hear it in many sports and military campaigns. The best defense is a good not in this battle, brothers and sisters. We stand. And we stand together. And we are called to be what, what, what almost every culture is proud to be. We are called to be stubborn. Can you do that? Good. We only need to be stubborn about the right things. Stubborn about the message of grace, forgiveness, and salvation. Stubborn about seeking peace. Stubborn about being open to refugees and prisoners. Stubborn about compassion and tears and assistance and humanity and caring about people and creation. So yes, there do seem to be forces that can tear us down or tear us apart. We find ourselves stumbling or doubting and fearing, feeling alone or abandoned. The message is that we are not. That is a lie. First of all, all of these commandments in today's lesson were not given in the singular you, but the plural, you all. Y'all put on the full armor of God. Together. There have been times when, when, I, when I feel defeated, exhausted, and tired, but then I get together with y'all. And we don't stand alone, but together and with Christ. Like yesterday, during and after our, our work party, it was a lot, a lot more work than many of us expected. I was sweaty and tired, but I felt uplifted and, and, and strengthened because, because it was positive. It was moving forward. And it was with y'all. And earlier last week, I sat with one of my pastor friends, and I, I unloaded uh, some of my stress and fears. And in return, she gave me hope and a perspective where I didn't expect it. And she says, I've done the same for her. My point is that we are not alone. Not as individuals, not as a congregation, and certainly not as the body. We are not divided. All one body we. The body of Christ for the will and the work of God Almighty. 
I'm not sure if I'm suited up completely today or any day. But I know that I stand with you. And you stand with me and together we put on and wear the whole armor of God. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace to you, brothers and sisters, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have a sincere love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless our, the, all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, bless fields and orchards protect the land from drought, and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned, and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. We especially pray for the, the, the people we name now before you. In your mercy. God of chains, change. Bless our traditions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life as a new job, new school, or new community. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. We turn and look at each other and extend God's peace to each other with a wave, a hand sign, especially a, a peace to those of you watching through Facebook Live or through the recording afterwards. Uh, we're glad that you can join us as well. You might uh, want to get ready for communion, lifting up um, your bread during the blessing of the bread, your cup of wine or juice during communion. Oh, my sheep here. <clears throat> Few announcements. I, I know of one birthday. Sally had a birthday yesterday, am I right? <laughs> I know of at least that birthday.
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Sally. Happy birthday to you. Darn that Facebook, it tells all this stuff. <laughs> Any case, a reminder that our month-long emphasis is Hope for the Future, the Food Pack programs in memory of Jan Olson. Again, if you can help with that, um, you can send a check to the church uh, office and uh, mark it um, for Redeemer Lutheran, but mark it on the memo line, Hope for the Future. Thank you again to all of those who are in the work party and those who helped provide lunch and uh, all of you who helped uh, organize it as well. It was, was it fun? Yeah, I think so. And it certainly was uplifting. So thank you for uh, joining us for that. Um, I did want to also uh, give, an, give something to those of you who are watching online or the recording. Give us, the first one of you to give us your favorite hymn. That's going to be our opening hymn for next Sunday. So we'll see what that is. Sorry. Maybe next. Do you want to pick the sermon hymn for next Sunday? <laughs> okay. But that's one thing that we can offer for them. But thank you for, to all of you who have uh, joined us and those that gather with us online as well. Uh, continue to uh, support your congregation. Uh, send in the offering. We need to be strong in our work for God's ministry here. And I think I'm forgetting something. I am. The directory, thank you. Uh, we are redoing the directory. We want to make sure that we've got names and emails and phone numbers, everything absolutely correct. And I believe out in the fellowship hall, uh, there is a directory against the far wall. It's all laid out, and it has your information there. Will you please, before you go home, go check that and make sure we have the right stuff? Yeah, if we don't have your name, we need to, know, we need to get it in there. And uh, the same goes with uh, all of you who are watching online. Uh, please get your information in. Send an email, whatever, uh, to let us know and have that information right. I think that's it. Let's continue our worship of God through the collection of our offering and this offering of music.
Let us pray. Merciful God, everything, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. you. We, we joyfully release what, what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Jesus Christ. Amen. of God is never more connected than, we, than it is here at the Lord's table, where together we remember how in the night of his betrayal our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Drink this, and as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so remembering these commands to eat and to drink and the promise that this meal carries, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Will you stand for this blessing and our closing hymn? I already know that next, next Sunday our opening hymn is Because He Lives. Sherry asked. Because Sherry asked for it, sure. God bless us and keep us. God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. God look on us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord.